Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing the Cobalt KSL124B-0324 volt searchlight. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the 24 volt battery slot, which will accept Cobalt 24 volt batteries. Overall, the battery slot is completely acceptable. I don't really see anything wrong with it. The battery slides on nice and easily with no, no catches or snags, and there is next to no wiggling or jiggling when the battery is firmly locked into place. And when you shake the light, there is no sort of power interruptions or loose connections that might cause the light to malfunction, so it's completely acceptable and gets a pass for me. And next up we have the belt clip mounting hole. Now this light does not come with a belt clip, but if you so choose to, you can purchase an aftermarket belt clip to attach to this light. But just be aware that you will only be able to mount it on the left side, seeing as there is no mounting hole on the right side. This is a little bit of a disappointment, but it is sort of to be expected from a light, light, let alone a, well, modern day light where most manufacturers are choosing not to include belt clips. And while this is disappointing, it's really not that big of a surprise. Moving on. Okay, moving upward, we have the grip. Now, the grip on this particular light is fairly standard. It has a nice rubberized texture with hard plastic for a secure anchor point for your grip. And quite frankly, there really is nothing to complain about. The size is perfect for medium sized hands, but if you have smaller or larger size hands, you'll still be right at home or if you're wearing gloves. So at the end of the day, I think the grip is perfectly acceptable and gets a pass from me. And next up we have the on off switch. The on off switch is located where the trigger would normally be located on a drill or impact driver and is covered by a rubberized cover which is fairly flexible but provides well an area to grip as well as protection for the button itself. You press the button once to turn it on to its high mode, then you press the button again to turn to the low mode, and then you press it a third time to turn off the light. In order to access the red light mode, you can press the button and hold it for around five seconds in either the off position or while the light is on, and then it will We'll switch over to the red light mode. Once you're done in the red light mode, you press the trigger again and it will either switch off or back to whatever mode it was previously in. So overall, it's a fairly standard design and everything works as intended. There's really no delay in between when you press the button and when the light responds. So that is a nice feature that I've noticed is not always a uh, staple on these sort of lights. So I'm fairly happy with the design and build quality here. So yeah, moving on. And next up we have the lantern carrying handle or the hanging handle or whatever you want to call it. Overall this is a fairly standard design on these sort of lights but it is a nice feature even though it's not something that I use personally. You can use it as a carrying handle uh, like what you'd see on an old style lantern from I don't know the wild west or you can use it to hang on a hook if a hook is available or a carabiner or whatever else have you. It works just as intended. It folds up and it will stay in position or you can fold it down and it will, will lock into the uh, closed position. I don't know, there really isn't much to say here. It's made out of metal, it's securely attached. It works for its intended purpose. Yeah, it gets a pass for me, moving on. And next up we have the tripod mounting hole. The tripod mounting hole is located on the rear of the tool directly above the grip and will allow you to attach a 1 4 inch tripod mount to this particular light. This is actually rather unusual for a work light that is a spotlight. You'll find, it, find this particular mounting option on floodlights fairly often, but on spotlights it's actually kind of a rarity and it's something I'm appreciative that they decided to include. This will allow you to use this with magnetic mounts as well as standard tripods or a variety of other uh, tripod accessories that could come in handy in those different situations like when you need to use it with some sort of a uh, tripod clamp. So quite frankly, at the end of the day, I'm really glad they included it and it's a nice feature, but I would recommend using a bigger tripod than the one I had in the video. Moving on. Okay, let's head back down to the base of the tool. There's actually another feature down there I forgot to talk about earlier. And that other feature would be the fact that, well, there's a 12 volt powering port at the base of the tool, which means that you can power this light without the need of a battery, as long as you have a car cigarette lighter handy. And, well, quite frankly, this is actually a really useful feature for, well, people who don't want to carry around their expensive batteries in their hot cars or their freezing cars. This means that as long as you have a cigarette lighter, you can plug in the included cable, which is about eight feet long. It's actually a fairly nice cable. And then you will be able to power this light for, well, using it as a searchlight for if you're driving down that spooky back road, or if you, well, are just in the need of a searchlight, or if you're on a boat or something. There's a variety of situations where this could come in handy. And if you have a portable power station that has a cigarette lighter 12 volt port on it, you can also use that to power this light, which means that it can actually be an incredibly useful feature even when you don't have a car port handy, as long as you have a um, cigarette port on a mobile device. 
Okay, now using the power station, we can actually tell how much power this light is drawing, at least when it comes to the 12-volt uh, port on the bottom of the light. At high power mode, you're going to be drawing around 32 watts of energy, and on the lower mode, you're going to be drawing around 9 watts of energy, and with the red light mode, you're going to be drawing around 4 watts of energy. So this is definitely going to give you some versatility on runtime, at least when it comes to the 12-volt uh, cable. And I think that the cable or the power cable is going to be fairly... Uh, comparable to running the light with a 24 volt battery because I didn't really notice that much of a light difference when switching in between the cable and the battery. So yeah, this is just another useful bit of knowledge while using this light. So yeah, let's move back up to the top of the tool and finish off the features on this particular light. And next up, and probably the biggest selling point for this particular light, is the fact that you can tilt the head in between the 7 o'clock position and the 3 o'clock position, which means you can, well, have this light in a variety of different situations, and it will pretty much be a master at all of them. So, if you're walking down the road and you want it to be a more natural position for carrying, you can have it pointed up at the 12 o'clock position, meaning that you won't have to raise your arm up. Or, if you want to point it directly what you're working at, you pretty much can position it at any position as long as it's not below the 7 o'clock position. And, well, if you want it pointing straight backward for some strange reason, you can do that as well. I really do like having this light's tilting head, and this is definitely a feature that Ryobi is missing in their lineup, which is one reason why I bought this particular light, and why I think Ryobi really needs to, well, maybe um, uh, recheck their spotlight category, and maybe release a, a clone of this light, which would make me very happy, because let's face it, this particular light's tilting head feature is incredibly useful. Now, the head itself does not lock into any set position, and it's a smooth pull in between the 7 o'clock and 3, 3 o'clock position. It, it does have enough force that it should stay in place while walking and possibly jogging. Running that might be a little bit tougher, but if you can uh, stabilize it while running, it should hopefully stay in place. There's enough uh, tension there that should hopefully keep it from moving. But at the end of the day, this is a super useful feature and it's something that I really wish Ryobi would implement on their spotlights or spotlight. So yeah, moving on. Okay, last but not least, we have the LEDs. Now, there are six LEDs for the main light and a seventh LED for the red light. Now, the six LEDs are going to be, well, a fairly standard configuration of two by two by two, with the middle two being spaced out to form a circle. And this uh, particular set of LEDs are going to be how you're going to get that 2,700 lumens that they advertise and I have to say I think that's fairly accurate by just my naked eye and the complaints I get from my neighbors 660 meters away which by the uh, coincidence is how far the uh, range on this particular light is so I think it's a fairly safe bet that this is what this light can produce now when you're operating it on the low mode you're going to be dealing with around a thousand lumens which is noticeably uh, dimmer but is also going to allow you to have a ro longer runtime and the red light is going to be great for tricking your neighbors into thinking that the apocalypse just happened which is another fun feature on this particular light. I haven't noticed any issues with flickering or the light turning itself off, so I think it passes there. And the color temperature of the light is a little bit on the warm side, but it's not so much so that it's annoying. It's just sort of what you would normally find in an old school incandescent bulb. So quite frankly, it's perfectly acceptable and I don't really have any complaints. So yeah, let's move on to the way of the tool. Okay, without a battery, the light weighs 1,054 grams, which is about 2.3 pounds. And with a 4 amp hour battery, it weighs 1,827 grams, which is about 4 pounds. Okay, now the middle of the light beam is definitely going to be very concentrated and very bright on the highest setting. If you want it to be a little bit dimmer, just switch it down to the low mode, and that should allow you to work on whatever you have it pointed at without becoming blinded. Now, if you're going to be using this outdoors, which is where I would personally use it, you're going to want to avoid the rain, because I do not believe this has any sort of a outdoor weather rating, which is disappointing to say the least because this would be a very useful light to have during a, let's say, hurricane, rainstorm, thunderstorm, hailstorm, snowstorm, or any other storm that is going to be dumping water on you, because, well, let's face it, that's when you need a very powerful light. And, well, that's usually when your uh, light won't work as well. So the fact there's no waterproof rating on this particular light is definitely a disappointment. But when it comes to the overall brightness of the light, it's going to be more than make up for the fact you're going to have to run around with it in a giant Ziploc baggie. So yeah, okay, now as I zoom out, you can tell that those trees that are about 250 feet away from me are pretty much lit up to the point where it almost looks like daylight. And quite frankly, that's a pretty impressive performance coming from a light that is operated off a 24 volt battery. 
and I'm very happy with the performance here. And it will also help fooling your neighbors into thinking that there's a train going towards their house as long as you have a really good speaker set up to, well, help you with the sound effects. So yeah, let's move on to a comparison between this and another spotlight that I previously reviewed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and compare the Cobalt against the Heart HP HL66 Spotlight. And while they do have different features, their light output is very similar and that's why I'm comparing them. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off with the Cobalt light, we're going to start at the bottom. It has the belt clip, it has the 12 volt adapter on the base, it has the carrying grip with the nice rubberized texture, it has the lantern handle for easy carrying, as well as the tilting head, which makes this a very versatile light. It also has the six LEDs that produce 2,700 lumens as well as the red LED, and it has two modes for the regular white LEDs and the tripod mount on the rear of the tool. Okay, now the heart has the hanging hook on top, and that really is the only other feature other than the fact that the grip is fairly comfortable, it's compact, lightweight, less expensive, and well, it only produces 2,500 lumens, but it does have three different modes, which gives you a little bit more versatility, but no red light mode. Okay, now when it comes to the light output, as you can tell from the picture, it is very similar. Now, there are a few differences. The Cobalt has a slightly warmer color, which makes it appear a little bit dimmer, but in reality, it is a little bit brighter. If you look at the center of the uh, dot, it's a little bit wider. I think the heart is doing a little bit better job of having an even light distribution, but in the real world, you're really not going to be able to tell the difference unless you're actually looking for the difference. So quite frankly, they're both comparable in my opinion. So the only advantages the heart has is the fact it's lighter weight and well, it's also about half the price, but the Cobalt's features definitely more than make up for the price difference in my opinion. But if you are on a budget, the heart isn't a bad way to go either. So let's go ahead and go through the pros and cons real quick. And first up, super bright. Overall, this is an incredibly bright light and it's gonna be very useful in a variety of situations. Everything from looking for missing animals or people to, well, just annoying your neighbors. So in my opinion, this is a pro. 12 volt option. Being able to power this light with a 12 volt cable is definitely going to be a very useful feature, especially if you're not invested heavily in the cobalt system, which I am not. So this is definitely a pro in my opinion. Red light. Now the red light mode is definitely a little bit of an unusual feature, but one I think a lot of people will welcome. While I personally don't use it very often, I can see how this could be very useful for a variety of people. For me, it's just a fun way of messing with your neighbors. Hanging hook. While it isn't actually a hook, it is something you can hang on a hook or just hang or hold on to with your hand. So this is a useful feature in my opinion, and I'm always grateful for more options rather than less except when it comes to lighting modes. Tripod mount. The tripod mount is going to be useful in a variety of situations and is definitely a pro feature and something that is incredibly useful that is not something that is typically found on a searchlight and is a pro in my opinion. Tilting head. This is obviously the biggest selling feature for me personally. I love having the tilting head and when you couple it with such a powerful light, it just makes a pro combination and something I really wish Ryobi would copy immediately. Right now, get on it Ryobi. Three modes, there's the two main modes, the high and the low, and then there's the hidden red light mode. So in reality, there's only about two modes with a hidden third mode, which is the way to go if you're manufacturing a light. And I cannot tell you how happy I am that there are no strobe functions on this light. Moving on. Okay, now the first and only meh here is going to be the uh, 24 volt power tool system that it's a part of. Now 24 volts is nice because you have additional power, but at the same time, it also means that it's gonna be slightly more expensive than your typical 20 volt tool from a budget brand. And it also means that you're not gonna be able to adapt batteries over from an 18 or 20 volt power tool line, let's say Milwaukee or Mokita or DeWalt. So in my opinion, this is sort of a meh. And the first con would be the price. Coming in at about $80, that's a little bit expensive. I personally would have liked to have seen it priced a little bit closer to the $60 mark, but when you consider all the features and the versatility of this particular light and how powerful it is, that $80 mark might not be as bad as it sounds. No IPX rating. Unfortunately, this is not a waterproof light or water resistant light. As a matter of fact, there's a sticker on the side that says indoor use. Now, I don't mean if that means indoor use only, but if I were you and you were intending to operate this outdoors in the rain, I would definitely stick a Ziploc baggie over it. And last but not least, well, I think that one pretty much explains itself. Moving on. Okay, so what do I think of this light? Well, I actually really do like this light a lot. About the biggest downside would be the fact that it has that little sticker on the side that says, indoor use which i'm not sure if it means indoor use only or it means you can use it indoors but at the end of the day i would definitely be careful using it out in the rain but other than that 
I really think this is a phenomenal work light. The fact that you can point it at pretty much any direction and it has multiple hanging, hooking, or mounting options, you can run it with a 12 volt cable, and well, quite frankly, it's more affordable than a DeWalt light that's similar, it is going to be a great selling point for this cobalt light. And until Ryobi figures out that this is something they need to make, this is going to have to tide me over. Well, the, these two, because I actually bought two of them because of how much I liked them. So as long as you don't care about that indoor use sticker and the fact that they're fairly expensive, these are worth taking a look at and I would recommend them. So yeah, we'll see you next time. God bless.